Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome back to The Family Corner. As you know, this is an opportunity for you to reflect on the Gospels from this past Sunday and learn a little bit more about the Gospels and continue the learning that you started in religious education. So this Sunday, we're celebrating the second Sunday of Lent, second Sunday of Lent. And we're going to hear a very special gospel today. So I want you to gather together your whole family and let's listen to this gospel together. Let's start with our special song that we sing during Lent. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now you sing. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. And we make the sign of the cross on our forehead to ask that God always be in our minds and on our lips pray that God might always be on our lips, that we might always speak the word of God and over our hearts, that the word of God might always be in our hearts. Jesus took Peter, John, and James with him and went up on a mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed, and his clothes became shining white. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah were there, speaking with him. They appeared in heavenly glory and talked about all that Jesus' death in Jerusalem would mean. Peter and the other two disciples had been sound asleep. All at once, they woke up and saw how glorious Jesus was. They also saw the two men that were with them. Moses and Elijah were about to leave when Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what he was talking about. While Peter was still speaking, a shadow from a cloud passed over them, and they were frightened as the cloud covered them. From the cloud, a voice spoke, This is my chosen son. Listen to what he says. After the voice had spoken, Peter, John, and James saw only Jesus. For some time they kept quiet and did not say anything about what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening so well. Isn't this a great story? Today's gospel describes Jesus in an amazing way. He goes up a mountain with some of his disciples. They see him shining brighter than the sun, brighter than anything that they had ever seen. And he's talking with two of the prophets, Moses and Elijah. Imagine being there witnessing this with the disciples. Imagine this beautiful sight. Imagine hearing God's voice say that Jesus is his son and that we should listen to Jesus. What emotions would you be feeling if you experienced all of that? That's true. 
we might be experiencing a lot of different emotions when we experience this. It's a very strange and exciting and wonderful type of thing, but it's also pretty scary as well. This miracle story of Jesus is called the Transfiguration. That's a pretty big word. But what it tells us is that the disciples at this point saw a really important change in Jesus, a really big change in Jesus. When they saw him as bright as the sun, they realized how close to God Jesus was. Jesus is not only filled with the light, he is the Son of God. He is the light of the world. The appearance of Moses and Elijah is important in this story as well. Moses and Elijah had been long dead, and they were in heaven with God, and they reappeared at this time to speak with Jesus. And what that told the disciples and the people that heard this story was that Moses and Elijah, who had been so important in revealing God's promise to the, to the Hebrew people, to the people of Israel, that Jesus was continuing their story, that Jesus was fulfilling everything that had been promised to them in the, the promise to Moses and Elijah. So Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promise to his people. Jesus, as the Son of God, is the final word. But he doesn't break those previous covenants with, with Moses and Elijah, but he continues those. God is ever faithful. So we can place our faith and our trust in God. You know, many years before Jesus walked on the earth, the prophet Isaiah said, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Isaiah was sharing a message of comfort to the people and giving them hope. He knew that God would send a Savior and that this Savior would bring great light to the world. We believe that Jesus was the fulfillment of this prophecy. In fact, Jesus was so full of light that in John's Gospel, we hear Jesus say, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have great light. Hey, who turned out the light? It's pretty dark here. What about you? Oh, I think there's a lesson here. If you have a minute, turn out the lights in your house, too. Wow, it's pretty dark. You know, when it's dark and we can't see our way, we can feel scared and alone. But you know what? I think I've got something here. There it is. You know, when you have a flashlight or when you have a nightlight, you can find your way around in the dark quite a bit. And if you turn on the lights, well, then you can see your way around really good. You know, our life in Jesus is really like that, too. If we follow Jesus, Jesus is like our nightlight or our flashlight. Jesus shows us the way. And that's what it's all about, is understanding that Jesus is the light of the world. And he will always show us that, the way. Maybe that's what he was trying to teach us in the Transfiguration. That like Moses and like Elijah, if we listen to God and follow that light of Christ then we will, have, we will know the way and we'll know how to get around in the darkness. When we follow Jesus' example, we're transformed too. As Christians, we're asked to bring that light to other people too. We can be like that flashlight. 
we can be the people that show other people the way to Jesus Christ, especially in difficult times. We can help people to the brightest light of all. And who is that brightest light? Right, Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you a couple of quest questions to discuss with your family. So let's take some time to discuss these questions. I'll play a song while, while you're discussing them. How does believing in Jesus Christ change you? How does believing in Jesus Christ change you? And how can you share your faith in Jesus with others? Take some time to discuss that with your family, and I'm going to play a song while you do that. You know, in the, um, in the gospel that we just heard, the disciples, when they're coming down from the mountain, and it says that they kind of kept this whole story to themselves for a while. 
uh, we're disciples of Jesus, and what disciples of Jesus really do is they tell other people about it. And I can just imagine people, when I hear that song, running around sharing the light of Christ with other people. Uh, you just came up with lots of great ideas of ways that you're going to share your faith with people. And I hope that you continue to come up with ideas to do that. And I hope that you feel comfortable sharing the light of Christ with other people. Before we finish today, I want to go over just one more thing. If you get out your good news that you got in religious education and turn to the back page, page 4, it says here, we listen to Jesus. And what I'd like for you to do is read that paragraph with me. Okay, ready? In his transfiguration, Jesus shines with the glory of God. The voice from the cloud proclaims, This is my chosen Son. Listen to him. We listen to Jesus by learning and following his teachings. We listen to Jesus by trying to love others the way he loves us. We listen to Jesus by praying the Lord's Prayer, the prayer he taught his followers. So again, as disciples of Jesus, we're going to share that light of Christ with other people. And we get stronger in our understanding of the light of Christ by listening to Jesus. So like when we go to church, listening to God's word. When we're, when we're at home, reading stories about Jesus and learning more about Jesus, like we're doing right now. So the last thing we're going to do is, if you go to the bottom of that page, you'll see it says Family Corner right here. What, I, what we're going to do is gather the family around, and we're all going to pray where it says uh, family prayer. We're all going to pray that together. Ready? Open our ears and hearts to better hear you, Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for gathering with us today. I'll look forward to seeing you at Religious Education this coming Sunday. And in the meantime, remember, run with the light of Christ. God bless you.